This video is sponsored by Brilliant.org. Looking to boost your knowledge and sharpen your skills? Look no further than Brilliant.org. With their interactive, hands-on approach to learning, Brilliant offers courses in math, data science, computer science, and more catering to all skill levels. By signing up for a free 30-day trial using the link Brilliant.org slash computer science, which will be in the description below, you will gain access to all of the platform's tools and resources, including interactive lessons that make learning fun and engaging. With millions of users already taking advantage of Brilliant's offerings, you will join a community of learners committed to reaching their full potential. So why wait? Visit Brilliant.org slash computer science today or click the link in the description below and get started on your journey towards learning success. Thank you Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Hello everyone and welcome to this video on the Python programming language. So in this video, I will be creating a trading strategy using two indicators. I will be using the Bollinger Bands and the Relative Strength Index or RSI indicator to determine when to buy and sell stock. Now I'm currently on Google's website. It's called colep.research.google.com and it makes it really easy to start programming in Python. So if you're gonna code along with me, all you have to do is go to this website and then log in using your Google account and then get started writing your Python code. So to get started writing your Python code with me, go ahead and click on File, then click on New Notebook, where a new tab will open up for you, and then eventually a new cell will open up for you. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a description about the program. And I'm going to do this in comments. So here I'm going to put this program uses the Bollinger Bands. and RSI or relative strength index to determine when to buy and sell stock. All right, next one, we'll go ahead and create a new cell by clicking that code button in the top left. And here I'm going to import the libraries that I plan on using throughout the program. So I'm going to import pandas as pd. I'm going to import numpy as mp. And I'm going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And then I'm going to give my plot a style. So I'm going to type plt.style.use. And I'm going to use the 538 style. And then I'm going to run this cell by clicking this button here to the left. And this will let me know if I made any mistakes at all. Also, since we are on this topic here, before we continue, if you are not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button. And if you like these videos and want more, click that like button. Also, you can get the code or the data set or just support this channel on patreon.com slash computer science. And I will leave a link for that in the description below. All right. So with all that being said, let's continue. Let's create a new cell. Now in this cell, I'm going to define a function to create and get the Bollinger Band or bands with an S. All right, so I'm going to call this function Bollinger underscore bands and it's going to take in some data and then it's going to have a window size which will be equal to 30 days. Okay, next I'm going to create a variable called rolling underscore mean and I'm going to set this equal to data close so I want the close price of our data set that we're going to input as a parameter dot rolling and I want the window to be the 30 days or in this case the window size whatever I put in that parameter there and I want the mean okay so this right here is the rolling mean more specifically it's the simple simple moving average or SMA for short and even more specifically it's SMA 30 given the default value of the window size but of course that could change right so let's continue and let's create the rolling STD which stands for standard deviation I'm going to set this equal to data close dot rolling basically the same thing similar to what we did a line above where I'm going to set window equal to window underscore size, except for I'm going to put dot STD for standard deviation. Okay, next I'm going to create a new column in this data set 
called upper band and I'm going to set it equal to rolling underscore mean plus two rolling standard deviations so I could just do two times rolling underscore STD all right and then I'm going to just highlight this and copy using control C and then come down and paste it using control V and just change up a few of of the um, the wording on these lines or on this line so it's going to be lower band so I'm creating a column called lower band now I'm going to set it equal to the rolling mean minus two times rolling standard deviation all right so now this right here creates the upper band and this creates the lower band all right so that looks good next we're just going to return the data and let's run this cell let's create a new cell and now I want to define a function to create and get the relative strength index or RSI for short so I'm going to call this function RSI and it's going to take in some data and then the window will be equal to I'm going to do 13 days okay and then I'm going to create a variable called Delta and set it equal to data close dot diff to get the difference and of course Delta stands for a change next I'm going to create a variable called gain and set it equal to Delta dot where the Delta is greater than zero I'm going to place a zero and I'm going to create a variable called loss and set it equal to Delta dot where Delta is less than zero I'm going to put a zero okay so next I'm going to calculate the average gain so I'm going to create a variable called AVG underscore gain and set it equal to gain dot rolling and we're going to input that window which is 13 in this case defaulted to 13 dot mean all right and then I want to get the average loss or AVG underscore loss so I'm going to create that AVG underscore loss variable set it equal to gain I'm sorry set it equal to loss dot rolling window dot mean okay next I want to get the relative strength or RS so I'm going to set this equal to the average gain divided by the average loss and that will give us the relative strength and then I want to get the relative strength index or RSI so I'm going to create a variable called RSI and set it equal to 100 minus 100 divided by 1 plus RS and that's the formula to calculate the RSI so now I'm going to create a RSI column in our data set and I'm going to set it equal to RSI so we're going to get the RSI and store it in that column RSI within our data set all right next I want to create another column called overbought this isn't really necessary but I'm going to set it equal to 70 so I want to know when the RSI is above this value 70 because then it's considered overbought and then also want to know when it's oversold so I'm going to create a variable I'm sorry I'm going to create a column called oversold and I'm going to set this equal to 30 so anytime RSI is below 30 I know that it's oversold all right so we've added those columns to the data set let's go ahead and return the data so I'm going to go ahead and run this now and now we have two functions that can create these two indicators for us very quickly and add them to our data set okay so next I want to define a function to create and get the trading strategy so this strategy here is hopefully a decent one and the idea is to buy when the close price goes below the lower band and the RSI is less than 30 and I or you currently do not have a position okay so that means we don't have any shares right now all right next I want to sell when the close price goes above the upper band 
and the RSI is greater than 70. And I currently have a position. So that means that I've previously bought at least one share. Okay, so let's go ahead and define that function. So I'm going to call it strategy. And strategy is going to take in some data. So it's going to take in our data frame called data. And I'm going to create a variable called position and set it equal to zero. So right now we have no position. We don't have any stocks, right? We don't have any shares. So next I'm going to create a variable called buy price. It's going to be an empty list for now. So I'm setting it equal to an empty list. And then I want to create a variable called sell price. And I'm going to set it equal to an empty list. So these will contain the price at which we buy and the price at which we sell the stock. Okay. So next I need to loop through our data. So for I in range 0 to the length of the data set, I don't have to actually explicitly put that 0 there. We're going to loop through the data set. And now I'm going to check for when we need to buy or when we should buy based on this strategy. So if the data in the closed column at position I, if it's less than data at the at the lower band column at position I and the RSI, so that's data in the column RSI, row I, if that is less than data oversold, or I could put in this case, I could put uh, uh, 30, right? I don't have to put data oversold because uh, it's just 30 from what we created up top there. But anyways, I'm going to put data oversold at position I. And we don't have a position, so position equals equals zero. Then we can buy this. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set position equal to one, saying that we are going to buy this. I'm going to now add that price to our buy price list. So I'm going to set buy price. Um, well, I'm going to append to the buy price list. So I'm going to type buy underscore price dot append. And I'm going to append the close price at position I. And then the sell price will get an NP dot NAN value. And I think that looks good. So else if the data close at position I is greater than data upper band at position I and the RSI, so data RSI at position I is greater than data overbought, or in this case, 70, right, at position I. And position is equal to 1, so we have a position to sell. Then we're going to update position to be equal to 0 to say that we're going to get rid of it. We're going to sell it. And then the sell price will get appended the, the close price value. So I'm going to put in data close here at position I, and that should give us the sell price. And then the buy price will get the NP NAN value. All right. Else, if we don't go to any of those two statements, then I want to append NP NAN to both the buy price and the sell price. So I'm going to put buy underscore price dot append NP dot NAN and then sell underscore price dot append mp dot nan okay and then I'm going to return the buy price and the sell price okay so that should do it let's go ahead and run this all right let's create a new cell all right so now we've created these three functions let's go ahead and get the stock data. So I'm going to create a variable called data and set it equal to pd.read underscore CSV. And we need to tell it what file we want to read. Well, we need to make sure that that file 
is in the same location so I need to upload it so I'm going to just come over here to the left I'm going to click this upload button and I'm going to upload that aapl.csv file all right and so now that it's uploaded I'm going to go ahead and type aapl.csv and then I want to show the data so I'm just going to type data here and let's run this I'm going to exit out of this here so come on down we can see the the data for Apple from 3-7-2018 all the way to 3-7-2023 so we have 1,259 rows of data and seven columns and you can see those seven columns here all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to to set the date as the index so that's easy enough I'm just gonna do data dot set underscore index and I want the date field or the date column to be the index so I want to make sure that this is in place so I'm gonna set in place equal to true so that we change it on the data frame so let's go ahead and run this again and now we can see that the date is the index all right so let's go ahead and create a new cell okay so now it's time to put all this together so let's go ahead and add the the Bollinger bands to the data set all right so oops all right so all we have to do here is set data equal to our function that we created which was Bollinger underscore bands we need to input data and just like that we should be good so I just ran the cell let's go ahead and create another cell and let's add the RSI to the data set all right so that's easy enough set data equal to RSI and an input data and then let's run this and we're done just like that all right next we want to implement the trading strategy so that's easy enough all we have to do is create let's see buy price list and a sell price list and set it equal to our strategy and our strategy takes in some data and then we're going to add this to our data set as well so I'm going to create two new columns one will be called buy and I'm going to set this equal to buy underscore price and then the other one will be called sell and I'm going to set this equal to the sell underscore price and let's run this all right let's create a new cell and let's plot the close price let's plot the Bollinger bands and the trading signals so that's the buy and sell signals okay so I'm gonna create a variable called fig for figure and an axe and I'm gonna set it equal to plt dot subplot or I think it's up plots with an S and I'm gonna give this a figure size so I'm gonna put in fig size and I'll set the figure size equal to 16 by 8 I believe that is in inches but I could be wrong so next I'm gonna go ahead and give this plot a title so plt dot title and I'm gonna call this chart Bollinger band and RSI trading strategy okay all right so next I'm gonna go ahead and give the y-axis a label so I'm gonna type plt dot y label and it will be the price in USD of the stock I'm gonna go ahead and create a label for the x-axis so I'm gonna type plt dot x label and it will be the dates and then let's go ahead and plot some of this data so just type x dot plot and I want to plot the close price so I'm just gonna put in data close and then I'm gonna give this a label and I'm gonna set the label equal to the close price and the alpha will be equal to 0 0.25 I'm gonna give this a color so the color will be blue all right and then x dot plot I'm gonna put in 
the upper band. So really, it's going to be very, very similar to what I have, have up here. So I should probably just highlight all this, copy using Control C, then come down here and paste it using Control V to make it a little bit quicker and just change the data a little bit. So I'm going to put upper band. The alpha will be the same. The color will be yellow. And then I will get rid of that extra parentheses. All right. So now I'm just going to highlight all this, copy using control C and then paste it using control V and then just change the data. So this will be the lower band. I'm going to change the label to say lower band and the alpha will remain the same. And then the color will be, I'm going to go with purple this time. All right. And that looks really good. So next I want to fill in the color between the two bands, between the upper band and the lower band. So I'm just going to type X dot fill underscore between and I'm going to input data dot index. So that's going to be on the X axis. And then I want to put the data upper band and lower band. So that's the upper band and data lower band. lower band all right and we're going to fill it with a gray color so i'm going to set color equal to gray okay and then i want to add in the buy and sell signals so i'm going to use a scatter plot for that so i'm going to type x dot scatter and we're going to input basically almost the same thing i'm not going to highlight anything i'm just going to just write it all out so i'm going to put data dot index and then we want to plot the buy signal. And then the label will be buy and the alpha will be one. And then I'm going to give this a marker. So I'm just going to do this up character. And then the color will be equal to green. And then I'm just going to highlight all of this copy using control C and then come down and paste it using control V and then just change the data a little bit since it's very similar for the cell signal. So we're going to use the cell column. We're going to change the label to say cell as well. The alpha will remain one. The marker will be a downward arrow or in this case a V and then the color will be red. Okay and then I want to show the legend so I'm going to type plt dot legend and then plt dot show to show the chart. So let's give this a run if I did everything correctly. And let's see how this looks. Alrighty. So there we go. We have the chart and something definitely does not look right when it comes to the to the dates. So let's see if we can change that a little bit. So if I change the, let's take a look here. Let's just comment this data dot set index out. Let's run this and we're going to have the normal numbers for the indices. I'm going to rerun the data to get the Bollinger Bands, to get the RSI, to get the strategy, and now to see how the plot looks. So that actually looks a little bit better without those dates. And that's okay. So we're just going to use the indices for now um, for the dates on the x-axis. And that's just so I don't, I don't feel like uh, rewriting the charts. But you can still see that this chart still works the way it is, right? So we can see that we can buy or our strategy to buy is here in green. And then we see in red, the strategy tells us to sell at this price. So because that green arrow is lower than that red downward arrow, you can see that there would have been some profit made there, right? But then if we look at this next or these next pairs um, or this next pair. This green arrow is up here and it's telling us to buy at this higher price than it tells us to sell at. So this right here would have been bad for our trading strategy right so if we had automated this somehow then then we would have lost money right here 
All right, so let's continue. Let's just see how good or how bad this this strategy really is. So next, it tells us to buy here and then sell up here, which is pretty good. So we would have profited. And then it tells us to buy here and sell up here. So again, we would have profited. Then it tells us to buy here and sell up here. Again, we would have profited. And then it tells us to buy here, sell here. We would have profited. Buy here, sell there. Another profit. Buy here, sell there. Another profit. And we can see that continues on for the rest of this data. All right, so that's not bad for 1,200 trading days. Right? So that actually seems pretty good. And let's see how many times did it tell us to buy and sell. I'm just going to count this as one, two, and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It looks like I counted ten. So one, one bad trade out of ten is not bad, right? I'm just going to count that one more time. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so not bad at all. So that's the end of this video. I hope you all enjoyed it and found it entertaining and educational. And again, if you want to get this code or just the data set or just support this channel, then you can do that by going to patreon.com slash computer science. And I hope that you all have a great day. Please remember that this is not the only strategy that you can use. You probably want to combine it with other indicators, other strategies, etc. And you want to do a lot of back testing as well. So anyways, I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.